Hello Space Pilots and welcome, my name is Sammy, or you can call me by my in-game name Juliera XS and today I'm gonna present you my tutorial for Faction Warfare what it is, how to mm, mm, work it <laughs> and what you get out by joining so for this tutorial I'll be covering everything, hopefully regarding Faction Warfare or FW for short I will be uh, going over the core idea of Faction Warfare and after that I will break it down into segments and go uh, over all of the main aspects in detail. So if you wish to skip ahead, uh, feel free to do so. So first off, we start with the main question. What is Faction Warfare? Faction Warfare is a game mechanic released by CCP in 2008 with the Imperian Age expansion to offer players a stepping stone into PvP player versus player gameplay. It is primarily centered around two war zones, also known as areas of Losec, contested by two empires of the opposing faction. As you can see here from this map, it's Black Rise, Placid, Citadel, all the way down to Bleaklands and Devlin. Needless to say, that doesn't mean you cannot engage players of an opposing faction anywhere else. However, we will get to that later. The two war zones, Amar versus Minmatar, right here, and Kaldari versus Galente, a little bit different right here, each located on the border of their respective empires on high sec. Uh, they serve as basically the meat grinder, so to speak, for uh, each pilot in the faction and also every other neutral and pirate who wants to casually PvP or hardcore PvP. The war zones are also connected through a single Losek pipe running from Minmatar Losek to Galente Losek from Cyrus and the Bleaklands to Ladistir in essence. So if you're negative 10 security status and you want to travel from one war zone to another you don't have to go through high sec and put yourself in danger you can just go to only low sec in these war zones players who participate in faction warfare attempt to conquer star systems for their empires and are rewarded with loyalty points lp for short and faction standings of course there is no end game goal however apart from a medal that you receive if your faction manages to conquer all the systems. Other than that, there is absolutely no end game and no rewards for dominating, dominating the war zone. Um, what that means, if uh, basically if you end up dominating or conquering all the systems of your opposing faction, uh, that effectively means people have nowhere else to offensive plex. And that will just turn around and swing the pendulum back in the other direction but i'm getting way ahead of myself and uh, i'll be covering that more in detail later on now there are two ways of joining faction warfare um it's also called enlisting one being solo and the other with a corporation and alliance in either way, the members enlisting need to have a standings with the faction in question of 0.0, .0 which is neutral, or greater. If they do not have the, uh, the, the, the standings required, they cannot join and have to uh, fix that immediately. Enlisting can be done from any system in any empire as long as the station from where you are enlisting is built by and is owned by that particular faction that you wish to join. Uh, i.e. for example if you want to join Galente all you have to do is dock up at any Galente station like you see here uh, to enlist uh, stations like these can be found all over the all over New Eden um, they can also be found in their opposing faction the Empire Space as long as you dock in the right station built by the faction you want to join then it's not a problem however um, I must uh, remind you that social skill does not come into play when it comes to standings as I've talked about earlier so only raw standings is, con is uh, considerate towards applying. Now if you enlist solo you will be placed into one of the Empire's faction corporations. For Amar you have the 24th Imperial Crusade 
for Kaldar you got State Protectorate, for Galente you have Federal Defense Union, and for Minmatar you got Tribal Liberation Force. Joining Solo happens almost immediately. Um, unless you have roles in the corporation that you're in, in the moment when you want to join, you have to wait a minimum of 24 hours before you can uh, enlist again because those roles have to be removed. If you do not have any roles and either you're part of the M an NPC corporation, then it, the moment you press enlist in the faction, you're enlisted immediately on, on the spot. However, do uh, express caution because if you want to enlist for, say, Kaldari, but you are in Galante space, even in Pisec, uh, the moment you enlist for Kaldari, once you undock from uh, the station in Galante space, you will be free to be shot at by uh, players in that faction and also the NPC navies. So do keep in mind that when you want to join. The Amar and Kaldari are allied with each other as well as the Galente with Mimitar. That means pilots from uh, each of their respective factions can uh, travel through their own space but also their allied space without having to be worried about uh, getting shot at by uh, the navies. Uh, apart from that, there is also the idea that cross-faction fighting is also possible. What that means is the Amar can fight the Galente, for example, and the Mimitar can fight the Kaldari and vice versa. That also means it works with when it comes to plexing, right? If you are part of the Kaldari, system, the Kaldari faction, you don't have to uh, contest systems and complexes in the Galente space, but you can also contest them in Minmatar space, and you will receive the same uh, bonuses and rewards. Now, complexes are part of the core mechanic of faction warfare, and that is capturing systems. Plexes, for short, are dead space pockets accessible by an acceleration gate, much like in NPC missions, where you need to kill an opposing faction's NPC in order to contest towards the vulnerability of the system. Each complex has a timer. Depending on its size, you have to sit in the plex for 10, 15, or 20 minutes before a sit complex is finished. Afterwards, you will be rewarded with LP and the vulnerability for the system goes up. Once the system is 100% vulnerable, that's where the infra infrastructure hub comes into play. The eye hub, for short, also becomes free to be attacked and upon destroying the eye hub, the opposing faction will be granted the system after the following downtime. More details about this later. Once you own that system, you can upgrade it by donating your own LP towards the system's um, eye hub. Upgrading your system used to have more advantages because it gave you lower taxes on industry and uh, industry industry yeah, English and Also uh, lower taxes with, when it comes to marketing, you know buying selling and stuff like that brokers fees But nowadays with citadels, that's not a real concern anymore uh, However, the most however the most important reason still stands and that is upgrading your system will increase the overall tier of your faction and that tier level influences the amount of LP that you get uh, rewarded. Again, more details about, about this later. Right, so now that we've gone over the core information about what faction warfare is, it's time to go into details regarding each segment. I have a list right here and for those who already know some of the segments, feel free to skip to whatever you prefer in this video. So we got four. We got four factions, each with their standalone corporations involved in faction warfare. Amar with 24 Imperial, Kaldari with State Protectorate, Galante with Federal Defense Union, and Minmatar with Tribal Liberation Force. As I mentioned, enlisting in a faction can be done from anywhere as long as you find a station that's owned by that particular faction that you want to join and have 0.0 or greater standings with that faction. As I will demonstrate now, as you can see, I am in Galante space in the assets region, and I am warping towards a Kaldari type station, as you can see from the bluish red background. That's typically how you 
typically how you can describe uh, to who that station belongs to. Now let me just talk up. <clears throat> and in order to enlist, you have to go to Faction Warfare. And as you can see, there's a little button here type saying enlist me. I'm not going to click on it because this is my holo alt and I do not want to participate in faction warfare on it. But as you can see plainly I'm in Galente space and I can enlist to fight for the Kaldari state and one of their stations. If you are in a player owned corporation at the time of enlistment and have roles, it takes 24 hours after removing the roles before you can enlist in faction warfare. And if you don't have roles or are in an NPC corporation that then enlistment is immediate as you can see in my character sheet i am in npc corporation which means my enlistment would be straightforward once enlisted you are part of faction warfare era faction warfare and are eligible to be shot at or shoot other players of the opposing faction i would say faction and not I say factions and not faction because keep in mind the allied faction of immediate opposing uh, faction too much faction um, as I mentioned before uh, two uh, two of the factions are allied together Amara and Kaldari and Minmatar and Galente so you'll be eligible to if you enlist for the Kaldari you can be shot at by both Galente and Minmatar Right. You also automatically join a new in-game channel called the Militia, as you can see here, where every player from the same faction as you communicate with, communicate with each other. Hello everyone. Communicate with each other, request help or advertise fleets and corporation recruitment. Player-owned alliances and corporations also have access to this channel. However, be mindful of what you are typing in that channel because there are also enemy players on their alternative characters spying and looking for intel like fleets and stuff like that. More on that later. If you enlisted in high sec and you are in the opposing faction space like I showed you before, you will also be eligible to get shot at by the faction's navy. Now the navy itself is not conquered but they can still kill you if you are not careful. However, the Navy is slower to react and in a proper ship they can be tanked or evaded. They cannot be killed either and as a new player I do not recommend engaging them as there is no reward in doing so. But as I said they can be evaded meaning you can travel through enemy space as long as you don't take 10 or more seconds to warp away from a gate or a station. There is also the fact that because they can be tanked players often camp high sec pipes from trade hubs to each respective war zone entrance with ships that can tank the navy and target enemy ships before they can warp out. In essence, getting some good kills on the inexperienced or unexpected. Most often players who transport ships to ferry their combat ships or loot to and from the war zone are the most at risk targets. And the fun does not stop there. Players also enjoy camping the outside of the major trade hubs for each faction, most often killing players as they undock. At this point I would like to share some tips for new players so they can avoid avoid this try to use an alternate character or alt for short who is not in faction warfare to do all your shopping and transporting like i showed you before on my alt and two if you must use your faction warfare character then you can set up a bookmark that is directly in line with the exit of the station 150 plus kilometers away from it that's what's called an instant undock and can be made simply by undocking in a ship and not pressing any button apart from propulsion module to go faster and just let it drift now provided you have not been bumped physically hit in space by structure or other ship and are 150 kilometers away from the station you can hit ctrl b on your keyboard like so and save the bookmark Later you can edit the bookmark in people and places, places, locations. 
Well, as you can see, I'm 160 kilometers away and still burning, so I'm gonna shut off my mark, my uh, afterburner. Hit Control B, uh, save and stations folder, and type one. Click submit, and you can see a little bookmark appeared in space. Right now, we go back up and dock. In the meantime, you can check out people and places. Go to stations, and you can see one. If it's in green, that means it's in this system. If it's simply uh, white, that means it's in a different system. It makes it easier to find your locations. Docking up. Press undock again. Right, so when you're first on dock, and if you do not press any button or move, you're basically invulnerable for a limit, limited second. So what you want to do is right click in space, stations, bookmark, warp to location to zero. And as you can see, instantly warp away. Just like that, pretty easy. 99% of the time, this will work even with industrials. So that's why you should always have an instant uh insta undock on your favorite station if you know it's capped same can be done also with insta dock um one of my corp mates uh actually had this uh, prepared for us already so you can right click in space or just click on the bookmark as you see click on the insta dock warp to it and you'll be in position to instantly dock with the station. So if I press dock up now, I'm instantly docked up. So that's how you do it. So that's it for this segment, moving on to the next. Complexes or plexes for short is the bread and butter activity in faction warfare. Plexing can be split in two forms, offensive and defensive. Offensive plexing means contesting plexes in the opposing militia or faction. Each completed plex rewards LP, standing and points towards contesting the system itself. In order to place the system in a vulner vulnerability state, uh, so you can destroy the iHub and flip the system, players need to run and complete 150 plexes with, 150 plexes, with each plex providing a 0.07% boost towards 100%. As you can see, this is the vulnerability bar. Right now it's stable because our system was deplexed and no one attempted to do some offensive plexing. Defensive plexing, or deplex for short, means defending your own faction plexes. Where if the plex is success successfully defended, timer runs down to zero, you reduce the vulnerability bar by an equal 0.07% for each plex defended. This is, uh, this is how you stop people from taking your system. The plexing is also easier because you do not kill the NPC inside the plex, however the LP payout is proportionate to the tier level and how vulnerable the system is. As mentioned before, each plex, each plex is a dead space location, which means you cannot warp directly inside or light sonos or fields, apart from the large plex, which is in open space, quote unquote. They use acceleration gates as entrances, and much like regular missions in high sec, they are limited to ship sizes based on the name of the plex. Novice, as I'm here, will allow only uh, tech, one sh tech 1 frigates of either faction or pirate or regular just tech 1. Small will allow tech 1 destroyers and tech 2 frigates and below. Medium will allow tech 1 and tech 2 cruisers and everything below. Largest allow basically everything. They can also house potentially unlimited number of uh, pilots as there is no, uh, as you will often see a group of militia pilots defending or contesting systems, you know, safety and numbers. 
Now each plex spawns an NPC ship of the appropriate size for its plex and it's designed to be able to uh, to be able to uh, be killed by uh, ships of the appropriate size or less if you have good skills. The NPCs respawn up to 7 times at an interval between 90 and 300 seconds. Sometimes the plex can spawn uh, 2 NPCs at the same time if the plex was opened before downtime. While the NPCs don't give much in the way of loot, they do however drop tags and some of these tags can uh, be worth quite a lot if you sell them in bulk. Easy to do, easy to do since uh, most plexes uh, spawn seven, roughly 7 NPCs. So that's a bit of bonus money. Lastly, plexes do not magically appear in your uh, overview like this. They have to be manually opened and to do that you have to go into scanners, probe scanner and there you, there you have it. Uh, these should show up normally because they are anomalies so if they don't show up make sure you have this ticked. No probes are required. So in order to open a plex you have to right click on it and warp to within 0 or warp to within 10. Now I recommend warp always warping at 10 because if you warp at 10 you uh, if you warp at 10 you don't get stuck on the acceleration gate which trust me if you warp at 0 it happens most of the time. So if you warp at 10 you will be in range of the acceleration gate to activate it and you will not get stuck on the structure itself. Ah and before I forget Plexes spawn only in the war zone. They do not spawn anywhere else in Losex. So you have to be inside the war zone in one of the contested systems for the faction in order to have these plexes. Alright, so next up on the list is the infrastructure hub. The iHub represents the main structure in a faction warfare system with 25 million hit points, 7.5 million HP each in shield and armor and <clears throat> 10 million hill points in the structure. They are not easy to destroy and takes a while using regular ships. Smart bombers, attack destroyers and capitals are most efficient for taking IHOPs down. The latter being often oftentimes too risky. IHOPs serve two purposes. One, they essentially dictate who is in charge of the system and two, they are the main key to upgrade a system. As mentioned previously, in order to flip a system, players need to contest the system to 100% vulnerability. And oftentimes, players would plex even further because the iHub has a quote unquote buffer, meaning it can get even more vulnerable, quote unquote, so the players attacking the iHub can have some breathing space before enemy players deplex the system and remove the vulnerable status. In order to upgrade a system, Players have to walk to the iHub located in your overview as a regular structure, open the menu for it and donate the LP. Let me just uh, walk to it and show you. Quick little dramatic pause. Watch my lovely ship dance around in space. There we go. This is what the iHub looks like. Open system upgrade panel. Now, when you donate LP, a part is lost as maintenance tax. For example, if you donate 1000 LP and the maintenance tax is 5%, then only 950 LP are actually counted towards upgrading the system. The maintenance tax starts at 0% and increases the higher the, fac the fraction tier is up up to about 75%. The LP you donate is put into a pool with the LP donated by other players from your faction in that system. And the size of the pool determines the system's upgrade level. A system can be upgraded up to level 5. As you can see, most systems are level 5 and also here. The amount of LP in a system's pool is reduced every time a player from the attacking faction captures a complex in that system. 10% of the LP rewards uh, they receive is subtracted from the system's LP pool thus reducing the level of the system over time. Now, tier. 
T represents war zone control. Higher level means higher control over the war zones, which in turn means your faction owns more systems than the opposing faction. Tier level also influences the amount of LP you earn as a reward. Standard payout for a novice plex is 10k LP at tier 2. At tier 1, the reward is 50%, so it's essentially cut in half, meaning 5k or 5000. At tier 3, the payout is increased by 75%, meaning 17.5k. At 4, you have 150%, and that is 25k for a novice. And at tier 5, the highest, payout is increased by 225%, which of course means, well, a lot. My math sucks. Tier level is not just influence, influenced by the number of owned systems, also by the level of upgrades for each system. What that means is, if your faction and the opposing faction have the same number of owned systems, so it's say 50 systems, 25, 25 each, if you have more systems upgraded than your opponent, then your tier level is higher than his. That's why you will see people rushing to scream, go donate LP, go donate LP. Like for example, as we are here, right at the edge of between tier 2 and tier 3, if this drops to 49.9, you will see people screaming in militia chat, go donate LP. It's so they can keep farming that sweet LP themselves on your back. Needless to say, donating LP, donating LP should be uh, should be a group effort because everyone benefits or suffers from high and low tier. Now, moving on. LP or loyalty points are the main drive of faction warfare. LP is the reason that separates simple pirates and neutral casual roamers from the faction pilots simply because LP is basically your income as a player. LP can be traded for ISK and let me tell you in all honestly, honesty, Faction Warfare was, is and probably will remain one of the most lucrative activities in New Eden. That's why Faction Warfare has success because even new players can jump in and start to sustain themselves relatively easy with LP provided they sell stuff that are worth more on the market. I will show you how to do just that in a bit. So for one or two hours each day you can potentially make enough money to keep yourself or upgrade to uh, Omega and have leftover money for ships and the like. Let me give you an example of my own. I've uh, joined uh, Galente Feather, the Galente side of the faction for four days now. I've plexed on Galente side for three days I played one or two hours a day and I've just traded my entire stack of LP which was 750,000 and I've gotten a profit of 1.2 billion ISK in just three days with two hours tops of playing just flexing and killing people now LP can be obtained in three ways one running plexus we have already covered this portion so we move on Two, running missions yes you can run missions much like the high sec mission only they are done in low sec and much like high sec missions you have to have a certain level of standings to run higher level missions now let me show you an example of what i'm talking about so if you go into your neocom and go to business and uh, come on where no the agency you go into your neocom and you go to your agency and you look for agents now it's already been selected you select agents right any distance or you can just select your current system has to be galente federation because i'm part of galente federation has to be federal defense union faction warfare any level just select level one Right, I don't have any agent in my current system, never mind. So just select any distance and you will see a number of agents popping up. Just like regular high sec missions. Missions level range uh, levels range from 1 to 4 with 4 being highest. You can pick up missions from high sec as well, but uh, like I said, all of the objectives for the missions are found in the war zone and low sec. The missions are harder to run, uh, however the payout can be better because you can chain missions from multiple stations 
go out run them and you can complete all missions by docking in any one station in a system controlled by your faction and just turn them all turn them all in they are harder because of the implied risk you're doing missions in low sec where everyone can shoot you not only will the beacon for the mission uh, be shown in overview for everyone keep in mind that neutrons and pirates of course will often try to black uh, off, oftentimes try to blap you as well the missions themselves are most often easy to run as you only need to destroy one target or three to four industrials or a structure well i say easy because they can often uh, they can and often are done in stealth bombers because torpedoes make for easy destruction of a single large target and structures while their size and mobility lets them mitigate most of the damage and also because they can use a cloak uh, it makes traveling from system to system a lot safer and free killing enemies of the opposed faction every time you kill a member of the opposed militia you are uh, not only rewarded with the loot from the wreck but also with LP as you can see here I've killed a member of state protectorate and I've been awarded 113 LP yeah the amount of LP however is oftentimes so low as you can see that some of the players practically refuse to engage in any form of PvP and choose to deplex instead uh, quite a sensitive topic that I will discuss in length towards the end. However, this is why faction warfare is sometimes criticized because uh, most veteran players believe faction warfare space should be PvP focused and pilots should be rewarded better for engaging in PvP instead of mindlessly shooting NPCs and waiting out the timer for the LP. And personally, I tend to agree. Not with the fact that uh, faction warfare should be only PvP, but with the fact that PvP should be rewarded better. Right now, the payout from a kill is influenced by the value of the ship that you killed. So, because this ship was valued at 2 mil isk, I only got 113 LP. It also takes into account the tier level you are at. That means uh, that if I kill a ship worth 1k LP and I'm at tier 1, I will only get uh, 500 LP as a reward. And why this is a problem? Well, Faction Warfare Space, to, uh, faction warfare space tends to be Fragate Heaven. A decently fitted Merlin will give you about 400 LP. Not even most cruisers don't break the standard 10k LP that you get from a novice plex. So yeah, you can see where I'm going with this now for trading lp and making money first you gotta know what to buy and what to sell and to do that what you want to do is go into your browser and type the following lp store federal defense union what you want to do is click on the first one that pops up is the the site has to be from fuzzwork this is one of the best ones i can find and this uh, page will appear now what you want to do is click on is per LP click it again until it's everything on green this is according to this site the best items to trade in your LP for money on the market but before I explain anything further keep in mind that these prices over here which these are the ones you have to look at these are expressed in sell prices which means sell orders which means this is the price that people go and put on the market themselves and hope that they will be able to sell them they are not expressed in buy prices so if you look up this implant for one example you will not get 8 million right you will not get 8 million for that you will get maybe 1 mil esk so this is exaggerated to say the least however do not fear because not all uh, not all items in here suffer from the same fate. What you want to do is, if you if you if you look for something uh, specific that you want to trade, you can just uh, do either um, do either an Eve appraisal for it. You know, just pick up the system, pick up the module or item. Put it here, submit. 
try to put it better there we go and it should give you its value so total buy value is less not even a million not even a hundred thousand esk so yeah that's the actual uh the actual uh, price we're going to be working with so you can just do that and get a fair estimate at cheaper prices but like i said not everything on this list suffer from uh the same thing for example i traded navy cap booster 800s which sold for a, almost double the amount of value that i invested right so things to look at number one this is the lp for the item in question this is how much lp it costs in uh in your lp store this is the amount of isk that you have to pay when you're uh, purchasing that item uh, this is its name of course other requirements some items have you have to buy uh, parts for them so to speak so if you want to get a fed navy medium plasma bomb you have to have a regular plasma smart bomb and some tags which their cost and everything will be expressed here in other costs so for this fed navy medium plasma bomb you have to pay approximately 57 million uh, isk uh, for the parts and another 18 million for which is the price in the store and of course 45,000 lp the sale price is of course greatly exaggerated as well as you will soon discover but that's this is pretty much your uh, your guideline to how you're gonna go about and trade your stuff if you want to be even more uh, anal about it you can just go to uh, Jira or whatever trade hub you like and just fiddle around and search for stuff that uh, you think you could sell I mean if you don't want your S to be direct I, what I do is mostly just sell to the first buy uh, buy orders I find. I do not place items on the market because I have no patience or no time for 0.1% 0, 0 games. Right. So if you want to do that, then that's fine as well. Just pick up your items and uh, go do that. Now, for getting your items from the LP store, what you want to do is select the system where you want to do your trading. I would highly recommend you do all the training in high sec because you're relatively safer and um, not run the risk of getting your hull or blown up by uh, opposing militia people. So personally I did a quick destination to the Dixie and the first high sec system that I found was Orval. If you click on the system and go to stations you will find this Federal Defense Union Logistics Support. It has LP store so that this is one example of the station that you want to visit now when you get to the station it's gonna be something similar to this so you just open up the loyalty point store obviously this isn't the right one but it's similar to this and it will show you all the items that you can get for LP uh, here's a cool little trick most of the items that you see in every other Galante type LP store will be the same as the items in the Federal Defense Union LP store. The only difference will be uh, Faction Warfare's uh, LP store is a lot cheaper than any other LP store. For example, if I wanted to buy a Megatron Navy issue it will, uh, from Faction Warfare LP store, it will only cost me 250,000 LP, not 600,000. So if you're looking for something uh, more specific, you get filters right here. Or if you're just looking for stuff you know you can afford, or uh, better better said, stuff the components you already bought for. If you click on Show Affordable, it will show up right uh, right away what you uh, the item that you want to get. And so that's. Uh, that's it for trading LP. It's nothing, uh, nothing too fancy. Just make sure you try to use an uh, an alt character to do all your hauling because trust me, you do not want to put in all the effort in plexing and making LP just to lose it to a stupid mistake. You will regret it. Been there, done that. All right, moving on.
PvP in Faction Warfare, in essence, is not that different from PvP anywhere else in EVE. The only two differences that I can tell you off the top of my head is that you can fight your opposing faction anywhere without fear of Concord or Sentry Guns. And most often neutrals will not engage you either on a gate or station because they also fear Sentry Guns. The other difference is you can now use afterburner fits on your ship. Yes. You may be chuckling a bit here, but it's true. Most PvP scenarios revolve around you having either a micro drive fitted to your ship or are double prop fitted. Very rarely in no sec or wormhole space, for that matter, do you see people fitting afterburner. In Faction Warfare, however, that's another story, and here's why. When you activate, a, when you activate the acceleration gate for a plex, you enter the plex and immediately upon uh, exiting, exiting warp speed, you land near a beacon that's visible and clickable in space. To put it in layman's terms, uh, the acceleration gate is the outside door to your room and the beacon is the inside part of the door of your room. Meaning, everyone coming inside the place will end up right smack at that beacon. So, unless a fast, a fast cutter like Garmer or Interceptor shows up in your plex, you will catch and scram most other ships on that beacon with an afterburn, making AB fits viable, viable and thus making your fits more cap stable and less P, PG and CPU required. Everything else is pretty much standard when it comes to PvP and faction warfare. Pilot meet, meets pod, pod meets ship, ship meets other ship, if not friendly then blow each other out of the sky. And that's pretty much it. So as my final thoughts regarding Faction Warfare for this tutorial, there is one topic left I would like to discuss before I give my conclusion, and that is the Pendulum. The Pendulum is a term most Faction Warfare veterans use in order to describe the continuity of Faction Warfare. As I mentioned in the beginning, FW has no endgame, instead Warzone control shifts over time from one faction to another, much like a Pendulum. The reason behind this constant shift is due to a special kind of player we'd like to call the Farmer. The Farmer is most often an alt character of the opposing malicious player placed in the other faction to passively farm LP by constantly deplexing systems. They can be seen in the wild sporting a nice shiny coat of warp core stabilizers and they tend to be overly shy and fearful of other ships, most often running away at the simple click of the D-scan set to 1 AU. Because their ships are basically modless and their characters are more or less throwable, people just place them in a backwater system and move them from plex to plex, deplexing everything inside and making passive money. All while also spying on militia chat, of course. Because of these farmers, when a faction hits the sweet spot of tier 3 or even better tier 4, that faction tends to stay there for quite a while. Only when the last push is done and total warzone dominance occurs is when the farmers change sides because there's nothing left, nothing left to deplex. Thus, in time, swapping warzone control, aka the pendulum. The farmers are basically the backbone of any militia. They control the flow of it and influence the tier the most. Of course, active players in each faction will still need to flip the system by destroying the iHub and then upgrade, but the majority of plexing and deplexing is done by the farmers. So all in all, as a conclusion, faction warfare will, is, will, and re will remain one of the better lucrative and rewarding activities in New Eden for both new players and old veterans. This is where top tier power block alliances come to die, while other corps and alliances flourish and grow. This is where most players can learn to PvP and where other players make money to fund their PvP elsewhere. This is where you can socialize and learn some teamwork and it's also the place where you can have small to mid-sized focus fleets where every pilot's action and skills matter. And last but not least, Faction Warfare is also a good place if you like to roleplay as there are tons of corporations who indulge in just that. Faction Warfare is great. It's because of the LP and the immediate PvP that I've personally spent most of my EVE career in it and I would definitely recommend it as one of the immediate and uh, best activities to, uh, to do in EVE Online.
Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you leave a comment and subscribe for more content. Take it easy guys, later.